if you're not able to manage the money you have, I don't see how you're able to successfully be a real estate investor. I just don't. Welcome back, everyone. So on today's mini-sode, we're talking about when it's not a good time to buy real estate. Now more than ever, with interest rates, overpriced properties, you need to be super careful that you don't lose money. So I'm going to share four requirements today that you need to buy your next property. I can't wait because I keep hearing people that every time is a good time to buy real estate. So you're saying that they are wrong? I'm telling them that they're wrong. <laughs> and you know why, Andressa? Shaming because... people all around. <laughs> you bad girl. <laughs> so here, here are the four, the four requirements. Let me just jump right in and give you these four requirements for yourself. Number one is, and these are the four things that you really need to have in place before you buy property in any market in my opinion. And that's why it's not always a good time to buy because it, it always reflects back to us, right, Andressa? It's not the market. It's not, you know, what's happening, oversupply, undersupply, high interest rates, low interest rates. But you really need to, you're, you're the one at the center. So that is the most important thing. And that's where I'm going with this, with this theme. So number one, I don't know if you see it in our, 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 com our Facebook community and our, our membership, but so many women are talking about managing an investment property, income expenses. Then you start asking them about their personal expenses and personal income, and they have no idea what that even looks like. And I'm not trying to shame anyone. Uh, looking at finances is not an easy thing. I always had a hard time uh, in some ways, but I am using QuickBooks. I am managing our personal income, our personal expenses, our investments, and I'm loving it because it's given me a snapshot where our personal life is in, in a sense. So, you know, I, I'm a big fan. You don't need to use QuickBooks on Jessa. I'm not saying go buy QuickBooks and get overcomplicated. But I think it's really important if you're not able to manage the money you have, I don't see how you're able to successfully be a real estate investor. I just don't because I've done it the wrong way because I know the other side of this, right, Andressa? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. I think he, what you're trying to say is like, think like a franchise method, right? You first, you master one in order to go to two and then multiply. When people have the pressure of buying, buying, buying without stabilizing the current asset that they have, that's the, re that's the perfect recipe for disaster. Correct. And, and even everyone has personal expenses and personal income. So we all can start there. And that's why I say, let's, let's start there. The second tip I'd say in terms of when it's not a good time to buy real estate is if you are not clear on what you actually want to achieve with investing in real estate. I often will hear on Justin, and we see this people just jumping in. Oh, what market should I get into? And should I do a short term rental? And they just start asking some questions like, what are you actually looking to achieve? with investing. And passive income is just like, so broad, don't say that. Retirement, so broad, don't say that. It's, it's broad. It's like telling someone you should communicate more. Broad, don't understand what you're saying. So I think we need to get really clear on what are your actual financial goals with buying and or getting involved in a real estate project. Like laser focus, short-term, long-term. I also say things change. So I'm not saying like have this goal and, 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 and be tied to it for 10 years. My goals change. We change, right? So, but I do think knowing what those financial goals are is really, really important and almost like the light that will guide you in making the right call. Once upon a time, one of my mentors recommended the following thing, right? There is th those things that we want to have and there is a need. So for those of you that are thinking, should I buy more of X? Should I go out of state? Should I just sit right now? Start with exactly what Liz is saying, right? Your, your why. Your why comes down also to your needs. What do you need now might be different than what you need five years ago when you didn't have kids or your circumstances were different. So what do you need comes first, like Maslow. <laughs> your needs come first. We'll always do. So it's important for you to understand what is that you need to prioritize. And then once it's stabilized, then you can pull the trigger and scale if you want to. 
<laughs> if you want to, right? It's not just scaling for scaling's sake. So here's the here's the third the third strategy. Let's really own the fact that you've done the second strategy, right? That you've created the financial goal. So having said that, the next step is to really assess how active and or passive do you need to be in order to achieve those goals? Because again, buying buying a property by yourself and just finding the contractor it may not be what you need to do to achieve the actual goals that you have. Yet that's what we're shown, right? That's where we have to go buy the property. Um, I'm all about the path of least resistance, meaning what is the simplest, easy path to achieve my goal? I didn't always think that way, to be honest. I think I overcomplicated a lot of things and thought I, it had to look a certain way because we hear this all on social media, right? And just uh, people and what they're doing and how they're doing it. But I, I really believe if we get focused on what we actually want, right? Those financial goals, then we're going to see examples on how to get there because maybe passively investing might be the way to go if you have, you know, if you have the cash to do that. If you have a, a time constraint, right? There's all different types of, of, of strategies or active is the way to go because you really, you know, you really want to have that short term rental and you love the idea of being a, 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 you know, really in touch with that customer and, and creating an experience because that lights you up. Okay. You know, so that those are different strategies. So I want to make sure it's clear. There's not one way and I just can't handle anyone that speaks about this is the the strategy to $5,000 in passive income. No, there's not one strategy. I think, Liz, that many, many people think passive as like lazy, right? We, we were children of a generation that thought us that they need to work hard, that you need to know what you're doing before you ask somebody to do it, that your your work is your worth. And there's a lot of things that we need to shed in order to grow. So being a passive does not mean you are passive across across the board. If you want to, go for you, right? But it doesn't mean that you can be passive here in this strategy and active in others. I think for my personal uh, experience, I believe one of my pitfalls was to want to be active quote unquote, in control of the entire process everywhere. <laughs> I wanted to put my finger on it. Of course, it's not scalable. And I, instead of having that desire of making sure things are moving forward, I hone my skill. I ele elevate my skill on hiring and partnering with the right people that I can li I like, trust, and respect, and I can rely on. That allowed me to step back and, and be like a toothpick. My mentor always says, one of my mentor, Jill, she always says, you need to be a toothpick. You know, when you're baking a cake, you put the toothpick in and you're out. You're in and you're out. And that's my mantra. I want to be a toothpick in life. I'm in and I'm out. If I need to be there for too long, I need to rethink who I'm doing business with and what is my role based on my skills, experience, and core genius. Love it. So I'm going to say a, bo a bold statement here for the fourth one is that I don't believe it's a good time to buy real estate if you have a lack of self-awareness. So what, here's what I mean by that. And, and self-awareness is, is a big topic, right? It, it's being aware of ourselves, <laughs> what works, what doesn't, our personalities, uh, what, what everything around it, right? So there's a lot there. I'm not going to go into different, different, you know, tangents there. But what I want to focus on is risk tolerance. And you really need to be aware of what your risk tolerance is. We see that so much with like financial planners. What's your risk tolerance? You know, you, if you've ever met with a financial planner, I think it's the same strategy here. And, uh, you know, you really need to know if it comes back to personality, but where, where you are in the continuum. And so by doing that, there's two, two things you're going to be, be able to control. You're either going to jump in too fast, so that's something to manage, or you're going to take forever to, to jump in. And so knowing where you are in the, the risk tolerance continuum helps, helps you set yourself up for success and almost like, uh, almost like outlines a blind spot. So then that's where the community comes in. That's where, you know, uh, bigger pockets and an investor comes in to say, okay, hold on, hold on. If you're taking too long or whoa, you're jumping in way too fast there's a community to bounce those things off of. And so that's the fourth one. 
our blind spots can either propel us in this business or honestly hold us back. So that's the fourth one. And again, just start with risk tolerance beyond all the other things you can be aware of. But that's the one that I would say is know if you're a risk taker or you're cautious and how do you actually make decisions so you don't get stopped or just get into random things you should be getting into. You know, risk tolerance remind me of a, a quick story. I just came from vacation in Brazil and my son, we went to ice cream shops. I don't think this kid had more ice cream in his life during that. <laughs> but it was 90 degrees. So that totally 93, makes sense. 93, excuse, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse so me. So anyway, he went to this, this ice cream shop. And of course, there's different flavors and different things, right? And uh, I made an agreement with him that he will try first before ordering in three scoops of an ice cream that he doesn't know. So you can try a little bit different flavors flavors and see which one you want. And I think that's the same thing, right? We can't just go and jump in complete, completely into something new that then it's like either we go too quick, right? Or we go, or we don't even do it. So either way, it's holding you back from achieving your goals. So how can you have that little taste? You can become a partner in one of the deals with somebody who already did it multiple times. This person is not doing it for the first time. You're not sharing the risk there. You are mitigating your risk while you're learning. So you have a little taste of it. This is how you mitigate the risk and you also gain confidence because you get the knowledge, you get the skills to either continue with doing doing the same thing with partners or going on your own. That's how I believe the, the little bite of ice cream can help. Ooh, I want some ice cream now. <laughs> so in summary, in summary, just here's the deal. You need to get clear on, you know, A, have you gotten your financial house in order? Two, you know, what are those financial goals? Short term, one year, five year, not attached, but just clarity of financial goals. Third thing is how active or passive do you need to be to achieve those financial goals? And the last thing is self-awareness. Where are you on the risk tolerance scale? You do those four things, it's always a good time to buy real estate. Love it. Thank you so much for listening. And please like, share with other women that you like, trust, and respect that can benefit from listening to this episode.